All right, so before we got a basic use case of a string, we placed a string into a hello prompt variable and we outputted that text using print. Now, we don't always have to use double quotes to specify a sequence of characters or a string. We can use a single quote. So if I replace this double quote with a single quote and I save that and I do a Python index.py, which is the name of the file. It prints a hello world just like it did before. So you don't have to use only single quotes or, or you don't have to only use double quotes, you can use single quotes as well. Also, if you want to do multi-line strings, you can just add two more quotes. And this one's opening it. All right, and then let's add two more to the bottom. So in total three, from the entryway to the ending, and now we can write multi-line strings. So, and if I save that and I run it, we now have a multi-line string. And just like before, we're not just restricted to just using single quotes. If you want to use a double quote for the multi-line comment, you could. And if I save this and I run it, same output so that is how you write multi-line strings now what if we want to use a quote within a string because we're using quotes to specify that it is a string but what if we want to use a quote within a string so let's define another string called the touchdown prompt because it's today is the start of a, a new football season so let's do touchdown prompts and we can open it up and we'll define a string using double quotes. And what if we want to say Brady's throw with an actual you know quote to specify Brady's? How do we do that? All right, so we open up the double quote like we would with a, with a string because we want to specify a sequence of characters. And we start writing Brady's. All right, so I want to add in a singular quote, and, you know, to specify this Brady's and then throw. All right, so this should work. Now, if I put in touchdown prompt and I run this, boom, I see the quote, the single quote, to specify Brady's and throw. That is the exact same prompt that we specified above. Now, what if I try to use an actual double quote within double quote? As you guys can see, there's an error, right? Because it doesn't exactly know where the string actually and so it's, it's, it's having this as a string, but then what does it do with the rest? That's what's causing the issue. So there's two approaches to this. First approach, which is probably gonna be the simplest, is to just put a backslash, and this will pretty much let Python know that we're injecting this quote, and to pretty much ignore it as the entry or ending of you know a string. We're just ignoring it, and this is gonna be within the string. Now, if we save this, and run it, you can see that the double quote is within it. It's showing Brady's throw, but with an actual double quote. So that's one way of including it into the string. Another way to do it, we can remove that backslash. And we can just make this a single quote because we pretty much found out before that we can use a single quote to define a string and we can use a double quote. So if we just not use a double quote and use a single quote, we can just inject this double quote and there shouldn't be an issue because that's not what it's using to specify that it's a string in this case. So if we run that, boom, we see the same output. So either or, you can use either approach. It's really up to you. All right, so in Python, there are a series of special characters that we can use that does special instructions. So we kind of already used a couple. Um, when it came to injecting a double quote, we did the backslash and then we added the double quote and this pretty much injected the double quote um, so that's one example of a special character but another cool special character that is included is the backslash n right and I'll, I'll leave a list of you know different special characters that you guys can try out and use but I'll go over a couple so the backslash n I've got the backslash n pretty much lets Python know okay we want it we want to inject a new line here uh, so if we save this 
and we do Python and run that, we can see boom, Brady's, and then throw was on a whole new line. Um, and it has a little space in front of throw because of this space right here. Uh, so that's one special character that we can use. Another one that we can use is the backslash T, which adds a tab at this at this uh, point. So if we run this, and boom, you should see that there's a gap, right? Because backslash T adds a horizontal tab. Now, if we want to do a backspace, right, which pretty much if you were to run a backspace on your keyboard, right, it will delete the character to the left of it. So if I do a backslash B, what do I expect to see? What do you expect to see? You expect to see that S is gone because we did a backslash. So these are different special characters that you can use from within your string that can do special instructions. So like I said, I'll leave a little, you know, graph or table to show you guys, you know, the different characters that you guys can use from within your strings. Now, what if I wanted to use backslash B, um, but not use the special characters? I don't want the instructions to be ran. I actually just want to inject backslash B without it actually doing a backspace. We can use a thing called raw strings. So raw string will pretty much just take anything that we place into it and just use it as a string. It doesn't do any special characters it just returns a raw string as the name implies so if all you got to do is use a R right in front of it and boom as you guys can see our string pretty much turned red and, you know as a VS code thing you know they do um, highlighting so this pretty much specify or VS code is not specifying to us that this is a raw string um, and you just open up you know your quotes like a regular string and now anything within this string is included there is not going to be any backslash no new line no any of that so i can do that now just to show you guys and if i save it boom you guys see everything there's no backspace there's no new line it's just including everything it's a raw string so if there is any if there's a case that you guys need you know backslashes and um, you don't need any special instructions to be done from within the string then a raw string should be perfect and it output it like it's supposed to. All right, so I'm always talking about how Python interprets a string as a sequence of characters, but let's really get an understanding of that. So I'm gonna create another variable called word, and I'm gonna make that equal to Python, right? So this is just a sequence of characters. It has P in it, it has Y, T, H, O, and N, right? So because it's a sequence of characters, what if I want to get just one instance of that sequence? We could do that in Python. First, let's just get the variable and let's open up some brackets and let's place a value in here, right? So I'm gonna put the value zero. This is what you call an index, right? This is pretty much saying from this word, right? I want to get, or I want to have access to zero because Python separates each character as a series of numbers that we can use to access that character. So in this case, we're using zero. In Python, we start at zero, we don't start at one. Um, so we're using the zero to get the first value within this sequence of characters, in this case is P. So if I run this, let me save it first, and I run it, boom, I see P. Because in this word, I'm using these bracket, brackets to know or to let Python know I'm trying to access a value within this sequence of characters. And within that sequence of characters, I'm trying to access the first value, which in this case is zero, right? And if I'm trying to get the next value after zero, which is Y, I just place a one because I just add a value. I'm just incrementing because it's contiguous. It's, it's going one by one until it gets to the end. Um, and then if I add one, right? and I run that again, I should expect to see why and continue on until you get to end. So let's take a look at this screen real quick. This is the word that I just had. It's called Python. It's the name of the language. And the box represents the index or represents the position within that sequence of characters. So P, as we saw, is represented by the index zero. Y is one. 
and like I said you can just keep incrementing by one until you get to the end so T is 2 H is 3 O is 4 and 5 is N so this is how these secrets of characters are split and we have the ability to access each individual character by using a bracket and placing this index value now in Python we also have the ability to go from the end or from the like reverse so like to go from the end down to the beginning that is possible by using the negative one right because negative one is always going to specify the last value within that sequence of characters and if we were to add negative one from you know negative one we'll just go to the from the back um, back to the beginning until you get to the end so it'll be negative one negative two negative three so you just reverse it pretty much so zero to start from the beginning negative one to start from the end but to go from the end back to the beginning, you just do negative 1, negative 2, and vice versa. So this is how you can view a sequence of characters in Python. Now, going back to VS Code, we can you know check this theory. And now I want to get the last value in this word variable. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to run it again. And boom, we get n. Because negative 1, if we use the variable name open up the brackets and we use negative one we're always going to have access to the last value within the uh, string and that's no matter what string that you use like if, even if we use um, this hello prompt and we run it in this case there's a space um, so that's probably was a terrible example so let's, <laughs> let's use touchdown prompt Um, and let's run that and we should expect to see W because that's the last that's the last character within this touchdown prompt so you can always use negative one to have access to the last value within um, the sequence of characters and to test the theory that we can just keep decrementing to get the reverse value let's do negative two and we get O which is the next value after N so you can increase to get the next value in the sequence and you can decrease to get the reverse value in the sequence so in this case it's gonna start from you know negative one which is the last value and if you keep decreasing to get to negative two it's gonna be zero and, and if you get negative three it's gonna be H and vice versa so that's how you can have access to individual characters within a sequence which is just a string Now it is better to know how far to go within the word that you're trying to get access to or the single character that you're trying to get access to because there is a case where you can go outside the range of the actual word and that could cause an issue in your program. So let's see. From the example that we've seen before, we saw that this goes up to five because even though the length of this word is six, Python starts the index at zero. So it goes from zero to five. So in the case that we try to access six, right? Run that, boom. We get an index error, meaning we try to get a value that's outside the range of this word, which is gonna throw this index out of range error. So we always gotta be careful with you know how far you go and what you're trying to access. You have to be wary of that because that can cause an issue and there is a function that you can use to know the actual length of the word that you're trying to access so you can know not to go beyond that so there is a function called ldn which is len short for length i guess and you can just place your word or your variable within that and it will just return the length of the string so if i save that and run that you'll see six and because we start at zero instead of one you can just do the length of the word minus one and this is the last this is the last value within the word and this is as far as you should go if you try to go farther than that you will get that index error that we saw before or if you just want to always get access to the last value you can just use negative one 
um, but this is the way that you can get the length of the string and this is the way that you can make sure that you reach that specific index before you completely end it now that you have some knowledge about getting access to a singular character within a string what if we want more than one character within a string? What if we want to take a piece of a string, but not the whole string? We can use slicing. So in an easier or high level view of it, you can kind of think of slicing like, you know, a pizza. A large come with eight slices, but what if we only want four slices? And when we just take it one by one, zero, one, two, three, just like a normal person. So think of slicing like that. If we want to take Python or Pi from Python, we will just have to take you know zero and one. So how do we do that? Let's see real quick. So we're going to define another variable called word two, and we're going to make that equal to word because that's where we want to retrieve the characters from. We're going to open up some brackets because we want to access to you know we want access to the word or like the characters within the sequence. And we're going to use numbers to specify that. So how does slicing works? So first, we specify a number where we want to start, right? So in this case, we want to start from the initial index, right? And then we add a colon, right? This is to specify that we're about to specify a range. Then next, we include another number which lets Python know where to stop the slicing. But it doesn't include this index so it's pretty much going to be index or stop minus one so it's saying two but it's only going to retrieve from zero it's going to retrieve the zero index it's going to retrieve the one index in the case that it's you know six it's only going to be from zero which is p to five which is n but in this case we want just p and y so we're going to do two if we save this and we output it, then save that and run it, we should see pi, just how we want it. So that's how we can get a range of characters um, using slicing in Python. Just think of it like a pizza. You know, you have you know eight pieces. Just take out two. You know, we just want two slices. Now, what if we want to take it from the middle? We don't want to take it from the start, right? So we just have to change our starting point. So we don't want zero. We want to start it from T. So we know that T is the second index. But what if we want to go all the way to the end? We don't want, um, you know, two to two. That doesn't make sense. In Python, the cool thing is that we can just exclude it and it knows, okay, we want to go all the way to the end. So you can put two, a colon, and we don't have to put anything else. We're pretty much letting Python know we want to go all the way to the end. And if we run this, boom we get done start at t because we know that the index of t is 2 and we go all the way to the end and we could do that vice we know we want to include everything from the beginning up to an ending point we can do that as well so if we know we want to end at you know h we know that h is 3 so we know that stop is going to be the index minus 1 so if if h is 3 we want to do 4 because 4 minus 1 is 3 and if we save that it's going to take P, Y, T, and H. Perfect. And if we just want to just take everything, which we kind of like, I guess you want to put it in another variable, then you can do that as well. Yeah, just take the whole thing. We can also start from the back. So say for instance, you don't know like where O is, like you don't want to do the math and get the index. You could just start from the back because we know that negative 1 is going to retrieve N. So we know that O is going to be negative 2. So we're going to just do negative 2 as a start point and just let um, Python take the rest. And if we were to output that, we should see O and N because we're starting from O, which is the, the second from the last. And we're just retrieving the rest by not specifying you know a specific number to end that. It's just taking the rest of the string. The cool thing about slicing is that it doesn't have an issue with index errors because of the fact that even if we go out of range so if we try to specify eight here right we don't have eight characters in this string of word but it's not gonna 
throw in error. It's only going to retrieve as much as it can get. So obviously it's going to try to do the slice, but if it sees that there's no more that it can do, it will go all the way up to the end and that's it and return that. So if you're not exactly sure, that's fine as well because it won't go out of bounds. Now the thing about strings is that they're immutable. Once they're created, they cannot be changed. So if, say for instance we wanted to make P and Python into G, we can't just do word is word and try to access P and make it equal to G. It's gonna say that we can't do that assignment. It's a string. But with slicing, we could do that. So we could have, I'm just going to use this word to um, uh, variable. And I'm going to take the G that I want to use to replace P. And I'm going to use P, um, the plus, which is concatenation, means we're about to fuse two things together. So we're about to add this G to whatever I'm about to assign it to. So in this case, I'm going to assign it to the slice of word from one which in this case I want to start from Y all the way to the end so in this case I'm doing some concatenation so I'm taking G and I'm adding it to this slice of the word which is from Y to N so now if I save this I should expect to see Jython <laughs> so yes you can't assign a new value once a string is created to like you can't assign a value to an index that's already created within the string but we could use some slicing and we could use some concatenation to do it ourselves manually so that's the cool thing about slicing